welcome to your Edible Spirit New Moon Transmission for the New Moon in Aquarius on February 1st, 2022 at 1246 a.m. Eastern Time. We're very excited to be back with you this month to share this transmission as well as some exciting updates about uh, new sessions and session formats that we have on offer retooled during the Mercury Retrograde during the Venus retrograde, both of which we're coming out of and which we will discuss, uh, but you can stay tuned for those at the very end of this video, or uh, just head right over to ediblespirit.com, check out the sessions, or you can always find uh, everything you need at the links in our Instagram bio at ediblespirit. As usual, these new moon transmissions are meant to be a spread, a banquet, a veritable smorgasbord of the frequencies on offer as reflected by the new moon astrology, by the astrology at this moment. Um, and the new moon is uh, usually thought of as an opportunity to set some intentions for what we're gonna work with during this next month. You don't have to do it. You could do it in a highly ritualized way, but we like to think of these transmissions as sort of like, um, like news updates, like celestial, you know, news desk updates for you just to know what's going on so uh, you can ingest it or, you know, eliminate certain things, avoid certain things, keep certain things away. Uh, but, but as always with Edible Spirit, we're always keeping an eye on breaking these things down into the most digestible little nuggets so that you can actually work with them. So it doesn't just feel like it's happening out there so that you, you can sort of trace a path in your own life for how you want to apply these bigger influences in your day to day. Um, that theme, believe it or not, is fully connected to the sign of Aquarius and to the new moon in Aquarius, uh, but it's also mirrored in the other alignments uh, that are happening that we're going to talk about this, this month. Starting with the new moon in Aquarius, sun conjunct moon, sun on top of moon, same degree of that 360 degree zodiac in the sign of Aquarius, um, the luminaries, right? The sun, which gives us our power, the moon, which reflects ourselves back to us for better or worse. Um, but the moon goes dark during the new moon. So we get a little pause in the, in the intensity of the energy uh, as we calibrate to a new sign, right? The sun is freshly moved into the sign of Aquarius, relatively. Uh, and so the new moon represents this moment where we can make some decisions about how we're going to proceed for the next month uh, uh, with this snapshot of the astrology that's around us. Aquarius represents the place where the, traditionally, where, where the individual meets the collective, um, where we in our little microcosms meet we in the macrocosm or we, you know, uh, uh, our small selves meet we, the collective of humanity. Um, it also represents the point in between what was and what will be, right? Uh, um, it it's, can be thought of as uh, the place where the patterns of relating or interacting or behaving which have crystallized and are no longer necessarily the most useful, maybe a little too rigid or too confining. Um, it, it, Aquarius represents the point where those patterns break down and clear the way for what could be, right? Uh, this is why if you are an Aquarius or if you know an Aquarius, or if you love an Aquarius, um, you might have an awareness of their sort of highly vibratory capacity to move between total tradition and total revolution and innovation. Um, you know, popularly they're thought of as weirdos because they're both set in their ways, but their ways are like bizarre, you know? Um, but this is very beautifully encapsulated by uh, the planet of Uranus, which uh, has to do with that, that sort of, shocking energy, uh, uh, the tower card, right, in the tarot, or uh, the lightning bolt, right, that, 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 um, that destroys in order to create space so that new patterns and new archetypes and new growth can come through. So really, just starting off with that new moon in Aquarius, this is an opportunity for you to ask yourself, 
what kind of revolution do I want to start, you know, personally, based on what I'm seeing going on in the collective? And how do I intend this month in my own individual life to engage and interact and interface with the world? This is not a given right now, right? Like this is, it, our collectivity is mostly happening digitally, right? So, and Aquarius, you know, represents the digisphere. Um, so that can be a good thing, or it can also isolate us. And interestingly, that's also representative of Aquarius, the idea of tribes and um, kind of factions. Uh, uh, we think of the age of Aquarius, right, as the era of, of brotherly, sisterly, and non-binary love, right? Uh, um, the age of Aquarius. But I think if you look around, you can see the potentially shadowy side of the age of Aquarius, which is everybody kind of splitting off into groups and an us versus them mentality. But, you know, that's a bummer. But also, if it's just us versus them, then it's really only one unification that has to happen, right? So that might be a good question to ask this month too. Like, how do I personally intend to pursue collective unity, collective unification? What can I do in my life to encourage more of this harmony amongst all people, goodwill towards all humans, right? And the environment and animals and, and spirits, you know, like, um, Aquarius can be that, or it can literally be like intellectual, digital, tribal warfare. You decide, right? We decide. But um, uh, the new moon is this moment for us to go, okay, where am I? And, and what paths can I take? Or what directions can I choose on my path to make sure that I'm going towards unity for all as opposed to separatism and factionism? This new moon is also a conjunct the planet Saturn, which is also an Aquarius, and is Saturn is squaring Uranus, right? Um, which is a, a, a big, long, slow-moving influence, and there's a lot of tension in it. We've talked about this in the last few transmissions because this is such a long-lasting uh, influence, the Saturn square Uranus uh, moment. Um, and the way we've been summing it up for you is sort of like Saturn representing the hard lessons we're learning as a collective relative to all of this decimation and destruction around us. Um, Pluto, which we'll talk about in a moment, is sort of like, yeah, it's dead. Deal with it. Uh, grow from it. But Uranus gets us to look at what's been blown up to sort of rifle through the ashes and, and, and look through the shrapnel and the smithereens, being like, what can we make from this decimation? What can we recreate? What 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 can can come to be now? And so, you know, this, this new moon conjunct Saturn says to us that if we face the hard lessons we've had to learn, if we just really presume that there's something to learn here based on all the shit that's been destroyed, that there's a really beautiful portal available to us now, specifically during the new moon, um, that makes it that much easier for us to, it, to work on what matters to us individually while taking in the hard lessons we have to learn, it's almost as though it leads to a resolution of the tension between what's been destroyed, what's changed, right? And what we've learned from it. And that's what a square represents with the Saturn Uranus square. Um, it's a tension between what's changed and died, Uranus and Taurus, uh, uh, or what's changed and broken down, Uranus and Taurus in the material plane. And what we've learned collectively, Saturn in Aquarius. And then the new moon makes that very intimate for us. So it's almost like the new moon focuses our lens so that even if you're just looking at what's right in front of you, if you remember, ugh, we're all learning these hard fucking lessons. Can I integrate what's what I've learned, what I've learned in order to set my intentions this month? 
The alternative being don't integrate what I've learned and just do whatever the fuck I want and not think about collectivity versus separatism and not worry about unity and just worry about my tribe and do I have what I need and us versus them and all this stuff. Very possible, also happening all over the place. You can be innovative. You can be Aquarian about this. You can use this opportunity to set some personal intentions to adjust your own course and thereby, just by working on what matters to you, based on what you've learned, the difficult lessons you've had to learn, the responsibilities that you've had to take on, uh, uh, inquire into how can I adjust my own course to address the greater good. We can't all save the world, but if we all try to do a little something to pursue collectivity and unity and harmony, uh, um, critical mass is achieved, right? And, and things can really start to change. And then we can also have a much easier time of organizing, right? In the name of positive change and harmony. And like I said, those beautiful Aquarian ideals of there's only one human race. It's just the one of us here, just one family. Ugh, tribes and, and factions and even state lines are so um, theoretical. They're not real. We are all on this burning rock together, this like slowly melting, heating rock together. And we're really reading this month as like, yeah, that's what's up. So what are we going to do? It's not over yet. So what are we going to do now here in this moment? And even specifically in this month with the new moon. Venus is newly turned direct. Venus is one of the inner planets. Venus, Mars, Mercury also, inner planets, have a, have a very just visible, immediate, tangible effect on our everyday life. Venus was retrograde from December 19th until January 29th, so it only very recently went direct. Um, that retrograde, I don't know about you, but it was very gnarly for, for us. Um, Venus retrograde in Capricorn, Venus being a planet that's connected to uh, both Libra and Taurus, right? So an air sign, but specifically an earth sign, the material plane. Um, when it's about Libra, it's about beauty and gorgeousness and the goddess and harmony and balance and all this stuff. But we're approaching it this month from the uh, point of view of Venus representing Taurus because this Venus retrograde was in Capricorn. Um, Capricorn, also an earth sign, and it's about accomplishment and authority and sort of uh, uh, achievement. So we were really reading it as Venus going retrograde, teaching us about our resources, what we have. It's also about, Venus is about beauty and magnetism. So it's like, what do you have inside of you that is magnetic, that's either drawing things toward you or... Um, uh, uh, that is giving you stuff to work with, resources, inner resources and outer resources represented by Venus. When Venus goes retrograde, it's sort of like, how's that working for you, hun? You know, um, it, it's this opportunity to consider your resources and, and even to some extent your values, literally what you're working with, right? And oh, we got all sorts of annoying lessons. <laughs> during this Venus retrograde, because it was also eventually coincident with Mercury retrograde, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, so, you know, the retrogrades can sometimes have a feeling of white knuckling it, where it's just like, oh, we just got to get through this retrograde. But why? Because whatever a retrograde ruins for you or seems to ruin or apparently like cock blocks for you, right? Um, as that planet goes direct, you can sort of distill the lessons that you were being guided to learn or the issues that you were being compelled to deal with because of this planet's retrograde motion and its motion forward. So the way we were thinking about it is that this retrograde is like, it's not just teaching you about your resources, but it's teaching you because Venus is in Capricorn about what you're working with, but also like how things work in general um, and because Capricorn is so achievement oriented, it's like we talked about this uh, last month, you know, during the uh, Capricorn uh, transmission. What are you working towards? What are you working with? What are you going to do when you get there? 
And the Venus retrograde sort of makes you deal with what you have. And sure, to some extent, what you don't have, but not really. It's almost like the Venus retrograde compelled you to confront what you actually have and what you're working with, even as it seemed to cause problems with what you have and what you're working with, okay? Um, now, that very intimate process, that very immediate sort of tangible personal process is um, trining the Uranus and Taurus square Saturn. So that same Uranus and Taurus, uh, Uranus Saturn square. Um, what does this mean? This means that there's this beautiful, harmonious, again, opportunity now during the new moon for you to go uh, with Venus, like immediately recently turned direct to, to not be going, oh, what's going on with this Venus retrograde, but to be going, wait a minute, what just happened? What did I just learn about my resources, my values, what I have, what I'm working with and what I'm working towards? And then the trine says there is a, a, a harmonious flow between all that stuff that you've learned and what has been destroyed in this world. All that stuff, all that scorched earth that's been cleared away, just begging for us to rebuild, begging for us to create a new, begging for us because that Uranus uh, uh, in Taurus is squaring Saturn in Aquarius, which we just talked about, begging for us to innovate based on these difficult lessons that we've learned. Like, if you are a half conscious being, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So especially if you kind of know what I'm talking about here, please don't tune it out because it, it these days it, it almost feels like uh, uh, astrologically we're repeating ourselves again and again and again and again. But you know, astrology goes in cycles and we're clearing some of the heaviest stuff that, that's happened in the last couple of years astrologically and about to emerge into like a whole new different era. So think of this kind of as last looks and please don't get bored by it. Really, really, really what you just learned, right? It's worth asking like what was challenging, what wasn't working and what feels like it's suddenly starting to work again. Um, what's becoming more harmonious and also because of that Saturn influence, what hard lessons have I learned about what's changed and how does what I'm working with now and what's seemingly going a little better where there's like a little bit of tension relieved, how can I use these newly appreciated resources to both deal with the scorched earth, with everything that's fallen apart and innovate new solutions, right? Um, oh God, I have a good affirmation for you here with this one. I am working with what I have and accepting what has changed in order to deal with difficult lessons. I will include all these affirmations uh, in the you know, comment section on Instagram and YouTube and such. Um, I am working with what I have and accepting what has changed in order to deal with difficult lessons. I don't need to tell you that there's difficult lessons going on right now, but we're really excited about this transmission because there's, there's, I don't know, I just feel optimistic. There's, there's opportunity to innovate and to soar and to create a new, not just for ourselves, but for all of us, especially if we do some of this fine tooth work of reflecting on what do I have and what is actually working better and and moving harmoniously, Venus and Venus representing Libra and, and kind of harmony um, on my path, on my goal oriented path towards achievement. So it's exciting where if you just factor in these other difficult, unpleasant realities, it's actually like okay for you to be personally pursuing your own goals using the resources you have because that's what we're going to do anyway. But if we just set some intentions during this new moon in Aquarius to pursue the greater good, it can really inform um, uh, some difficult decisions that maybe we would have made one way two, three years ago that now we don't just have the courage or strength but we have the understanding and awareness to do things differently. 
now to do things innovatively in an Aquarian way, pursuing harmony and unity as opposed to separatism and factionism. And this brings us to Pluto. Okay, Pluto, which is conjunct Mercury retrograde, because Mercury is still in retrograde motion until February 4th. Um, Pluto conjunct Mercury retrograde. It, it's almost as though whatever's been going wrong in your own head, um, in your uh, uh, in the digisphere, on your computer, electronically, with travel, um, flights being canceled, such and such a thing. Yes, you could bemoan those things, but you know, Mercury retrograde just says, eh, we're rewiring you. It happens pretty often. It's like Mercury's like, we're gonna just go back and ruin your life in these various digital, connective, travel-oriented, mental ways so that you rethink things, retool things, rework things. Now, the conjunction to Pluto says, whatever problems have been on your path or in your computer or in your technology are there in order to, in this moment of the new moon, get you to confront Pluto what's gone, what's dead and gone, what's changed in uh, Pluto, you know, the government, or um, what's died. All the people, places, and things that are gone, that are gone. It's like Mercury is compelling us, uh, if we take that opportunity, to accept the end, those endings. Whereas Uranus is more about what's changed, Pluto is about what's done, what's gone, what's over. It's like Uranus is like um, almost like potential evolution or, you know, uh, optional evolution. What's that word for? Elective evolution. You could change. Um, but Pluto is like, no, change or die. Die and then change. So, uh, we like to think of it as, you know, the only thing you can really do with Pluto is accept what's gone. And Mercury, even though it might seem to be causing all these problems, is actually encouraging us to accept what's gone, accept what's over, and proceed from there. Uh, this Pluto conjunct Mercury retrograde is also existing in a trine with the north nodes. Um, trine in a sextile with the north and south nodes. So um, it's in this harmonious configuration with the nodes of the moon which represent our karma, what we come into life with, and our dharma, what we are working towards and, and, and are calling in this life. It's almost, it's, it's just another one of these opportunities to be like this beautiful inner planet Mercury seems to be ruining our life with all these technological snafus, but it's actually compelling us to accept what's dead and gone so that we can accept what we're working with, both in terms of our, you know, Venus and Capricorn, but also our nodes, our lunar nodes. Uh, uh, we chose to be here from some schools of thoughts. We chose to be here during this time. It was our karma to go through all of this together. Not that we brought it on, uh, but that it's a challenge, right? This is a challenging time. But again, we can either take the opportunity to pursue unity and harmony uh, based on what is dead and gone, or we can avoid what's dead and gone or use what's dead and gone to continue pursuing factionism and separation and dissolution. Personally, we don't believe that we came here to ruin our lives and each other's lives. We, we believe in a universal trend towards love. And like we said, all these different alignments this month seem to point the way or like carve a channel out in the direction of the highest and greatest good, even as we deal with the shitstorm of whatever's going on in our daily lives. So, you know, if there's one big message, we just encourage you to, to back up and not avoid the bigger picture, not avoid the uncomfortable lessons and the things that have changed and the scorched earth or that which is dead and gone. Factor it in to your everyday decision-making process. Use it to use the, the bullshit of Mercury retrograde to reflect on what's going on. We've been reading a lot about this idea of emotional maturity. It's making us think a lot about how juvenile we are as Americans. Also the Pluto return 
I think it's later in February, the United States Pluto return is coming up. We've been reading that for a while as a maturation where Pluto goes back to where it was during the founding of the United States. It's got this kind of coming of age feeling. And like, of course, we would all like to live our best lives and have the Instagram pictures be framed perfectly and just luxury, 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 but literally everything is burning down around us. And it's no need to get hysterical, but probably want to be emotionally mature and try to integrate those difficult feelings as we go about pursuing our individual goals and accomplishments. Because part of what we're saying is like as americans maybe you're somewhere else in the world but as an american it feels sometimes like we've been pursuing our individual goals and accomplishments in this way that's gotten us into this mess so why not use this aquarius new moon to invoke innovation and align with oh altruism and idealism and what could be holding the, the, the best and brightest vision, but not just in meditation, using this new moon to set intentions about how you individually are going to go towards that greater good, using the new moon conjunct Saturn to integrate those difficult lessons about what's changed with Uranus and Taurus, using this relief of Venus moving direct in Capricorn to be like, oh, my resources don't feel like they're falling out of my hands in the same ways. You know, uh, uh, whatever wasn't working is maybe working a little more harmoniously now. How can I harness the power of what's changed in the world to inform my work orders, my, my path, my pursuits, so that I am not doing this in a little bubble or in a vacuum, but just being emotionally mature to integrate the difficult things that are going on and accept everything that's dead and gone. You're allowed to define that in whatever way you want. And, and the theory with this astrology is that if you're really looking at it and defining what you're mourning, accepting what's been lost, uh, uh, then maybe even the rest of this Mercury retrograde the next few days, right? And around the fourth, it gets usually really hairy for three days around the other side. And then there's a couple more weeks while Venus retrograde, uh, Venus going direct works itself out and Mercury direct works itself out. Um, the shadow or the uh, echo phase, I think it's called, right? After it's over, but you still feel the effects of it. That's when that direct motion just builds up some momentum and Venus makes it so that what you're working with flows a little more harmoniously. Mercury direct makes your thought process move a little more harmoniously. You can sort of learn whatever was happening that that retrograde was trying to teach you. We're feeling optimistic about this because in an Aquarius new moon, what the hell else are you gonna do? Do you wanna just like get your resources and go to your camp and hunker down and prepare for the end times? Oh, it's happening. People are doing that. Let us be the balm to that factionism. Let us pursue unity and unification and brotherly, sisterly, non-binary love and harmony, no matter what seems to be going on out there. Because it's not that it's, it's not real, but... It's not as dense as it seems, right? And Uranus teaches us that, that and Pluto teaches us that, that things die all the time and, and new things grow in their place. Uranus says, whatever this catastrophic event seems to be, when the dust settles, right? I'm seeing like a, a volcano erupting, right? Ash, it's terrible, everything's gone. But when that dust settles, the soil actually gets nourished by that explosion. And the idealism of Aquarius just begs us to say, well, if nobody's nourishing that soil for us, let's use our innovation and our solutions and our own personal power to carve our own personal paths to create new growth, to innovate, to idealize, to harmonize, to unify. Okay, that's our wish for you during this uh, uh, new moon for all of us. Um, let's see. Yeah, I am accepting my past and embracing my future calling as I learn from the apparent problems on my path. So that's just speaking to this idea that 
Pluto conjunct Mercury retrograde is trining the nodes. There's a harmonious opportunity here if we face those difficult things to pursue our collective calling as one humanity, right? So, so don't turn away from that sometimes overwhelming task. Uh, uh, we encourage you to just use everything as fuel. You, you have the option to do what you will with that information, but we encourage you during this new moon to set some intentions for the highest possible vision for, for harmony between all of us. So as we said, uh, we are very excited to share with you some new session formats. We're gonna be offering a 45 minute edible spirit reading and a 75 minute edible spirit healing. So um, normally we've been doing one hour sessions that kind of combine our healing and our reading styles together. Um, that, that's how our sessions evolved over time but we're tweaking everything. We're tweaking timing, we're tweaking the rates uh, so that you can come in and if you have some questions and you know what you wanna to get to the bottom of, book an edible spirit reading session. Um, and if you wanna sit back and luxuriate and enjoy a spa-like treatment where we scan through your energy body, work with what comes up, reflect some stuff back to you, there will be some talking during that, but uh, we also bring in all sorts of stuff, toning, singing, um, uh, uh, might have you do some affirmations, we work with smudges, uh, but usually also out of a healing, we get some little things that you can kind of take and put them in your pipe and smoke them and, and you know go along your way uh, with some practices. We always try to give you practices, whether in a reading or a healing. Um, it's just we're, we're, we're being called to split during this moment, retool during the Mercury retrograde, change the way we're working with our resources and just see how you guys like it. You know, um, maybe sometimes you, you don't know what you want to get into and we get to do a healing and, and just see what rises to the surface, see what comes up. But maybe you have a little bit more of a focused question that you want to get to the bottom of, and then it's perfect to do a reading. So like we said, you can find out all of the information for those sessions at the links in our Instagram bio, or just by heading right over to ediblespirit.com. Um, if you don't fuck with Instagram and you want to be on our mailing list, you can do that through ediblespirit.com. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel where we do push out our transmissions. Um, but there's also a cute little portal on ediblespirit.com that you can use. So, uh, stay tuned. Uh, feel free to write us with any questions you might have. And um, we'll be back with another transmission in a month or so. Some pretty cool things coming down the pike as well. So do follow, subscribe um, in all the places so that we can update you on some cute things that are happening, some sound experiences, some new creative projects. Just we're really going for it, you guys. We're trying to innovate and be creative and inspire in the name of this Aquarian ideal of unity and harmony and collective peace, love, understanding, man. Uh, we love you so much. Thank you for tuning into this. Uh, stay tuned, we'll see you soon. Thank you, thank you.